Hey, what's up you guys? What is going on? And welcome back to another Rugby Player Reacts to the 2020 NFL Draft video. The NFL Draft is something I really enjoy. I come from a rugby background. We don't have a draft for rugby. We don't have a draft for professional rugby. We don't have a college system like the NFL does. We don't have a, a, you know, a feeder system like the college football system is to the NFL in rugby. Or at least, I don't know about it. Anyways guys, so this, this you know, concept of, of coming through college, doing a combine, doing pro days, trying to impress, you know, having negotiations with different teams, then coming to something like a draft, you know, waiting for your name to be called, it's, it's, it is really, really exciting. It's really um, captivating. And every single time I see one of these guys break down in tears when their name finally gets called after they've put in years and years and years of work, it makes you feel some kind of way, man. And that's why I'm reacting to these, because I really enjoy it. And I hope you guys do too. Anyways, in this video, guys, uh, we're continuing on from round number three. Who was the biggest steal from night two of the 2020 draft? This is a short video. It's just a little bit of analysis. We're going to hear from, well, I actually don't know what these guys' names are. Night number two of the draft cover round number two and three. We had a total of 32 plus 42. So what's that? 74 players picked. And we're about to find out who the biggest steal from that was. Let's do it. Wow. Yeah, swear to God I'm with it. I don't see nobody in my lane is quite go get it like me. Wow. Please don't be wasting my time with that business. Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who fits that bill for you? Oh, Logan Wilson from Wyoming is the biggest steal. It's the biggest steal because I think he's a value pick. And much like Joe Sherbert uh, popped for the Cleveland Browns and became a Pro Bowl player, I think Logan Wilson can be a Pro Bowl player in time. And the reason I like him, you just don't find guys that are tackling machines and ball hawks. 400-plus tackles, 10 career interceptions, and I don't know if I've seen a better guy running 400, down the scene. 400. 400 college football career tackles. Tampa 2. Then Logan Wilson. This guy's going to be absolutely everywhere on the field. In a long time. I think this guy in this defense in Cincinnati, hit. he's going to have a chance to end up being a star. I think it was a great steal for the Cincinnati Bengals to get him at the top of the third. Then Logan Wilson in a long time. I think this guy in this defense in Cincinnati, he's going to have a chance to end up being a star. I think it was a great steal for the Cincinnati Bengals to get him at the top of the third. Yeah, uh, I, I would agree. And uh, Lance, do you have a steal that you want to give us here? Yeah, I thought Jordan Elliott lasting until into the 90s um, mm -hmm. from, from Missouri. I know he had a little bit of an issue with the knee, which some teams were a little bit concerned about. But when I turned the tape on with, with, uh, with Elliott, I mean, this was a grown man. I think he's probably going to be the top two, maybe top three. He's got a chance, I think, to come to, to finish right behind Derek Brown in terms of the best defensive tackle in this draft. Even ahead of Kim, he's got that chance. Got I'm not slammed. saying he's my favorite. But he's excellent with his hands. He's very, very powerful. He can two-gap it up. He can play all up and down the line. You want him at five technique, three. You want to play him some nose, odd and even fronts. He needs to make more plays, though. He's got the ability, but we need to see more production and needs to get a little better from a pass rush standpoint. But to me, this is a steal. This is a, this is a dead red second-round defensive tackle who can control gaps and he's sitting there late in the third for you that's great value that's a steal i'm gonna uh i'm gonna piggyback off that with uh, talk about toughness and uh boy a big uh, huzzah and tip of the cap to the university of utah and what uh kyle whittingham has done there since joining the pac-12 he said when they moved over you know to the big conference that uh, it was going to open up a lot of doors and it certainly did he's a heck of a recruiter and man you look at the defensive backs that came off the board uh, two safeties and now a corner and at pick number 50 to get jalen johnson uh you want to talk about tough a guy that played with a torn labrum i mean suffered at the camp and ends up playing all year and all he is is an all-american and uh bucky lance you know i mean this is someone that can do mm -hmm. it all i mean he can play press he is gonna manhandle you at the line of scrimmage and you know how important that is uh with the mm. athleticism to keep up with someone if that's the way you're going to play and he can also play boundary i mean he can do everything um and and i think really of, of all the players on that team this is one that was kind of that tone setter for a team that you knew when you were going to play against them in a pac-12 contest you're going to get punched in the mouth and you better better be able to survive it they win the south they make it to the pac-12 championship game doesn't end up working out there against oregon but 
man, an impressive team. And, and I think really, truly one of the tone setters for a squad that did great things in the Pac-12 this year. And I expect him to be a heck of a pro. Yeah, I had him in the 20s in my uh, first round mock draft and uh, expected him to go off there among some of the top uh, four, five, six cornerbacks and ends up lasting set into the second round. So I'm going to go to a guy that maybe had the biggest drop in this entire draft. He was a guy that we had mocked at the tail end of the first round. Look, if none of them mention running back Jonathan Taylor, I just don't know why. He ends up lasting all the way till pick number 74. No, it's not him. In the third round, and it's Zach Bond out of Wisconsin. I think he's also a symptom of the current situation and circumstances that we're dealing with because of the coronavirus pandemic. He had the, uh, the diluted test come back from the combine, the diluted drug test, had too much water in the system there. And I think because of what we were dealing with here, you were going to see guys with injury concerns and guys with whatever you want to call it, red flags off the field, character concern drop. And not saying it's a character issue, but a red flag popping up there with the diluted test for Bond. I think that dropped in. Saints trade up uh, with the Cleveland Browns to come into the third at 74 and make the pick for Bond. They actually gave up a 2021 third. They felt that strongly about Vaughn and they made him uh, that selection there at number 74. All right, that'll look at some steals there, uh, night two of the 2020 NFL Draft. When we come back, a whole lot of fun. We also um, like all right, mate. Uh, that was a quick video. I feel like we're probably going to combine that with this next video, which is the biggest winners from night two of the 2020 Draft. But before I do that, I, I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like no one is talking about this Jonathan Taylor. I feel like, is he being treated exactly the same way that DK Metcalf got treated after the combine and, and throughout the draft? Jonathan Taylor draft, okay, let me see here. The Indianapolis Colts have selected former Wisconsin Badgers running back, Jonathan Taylor with the 41st pick. The running back not being valued as high as really hurt Taylor's stock. If this would have been 10 or 15 years ago, Taylor would probably have been a top 10 pick. Well, if it had been 5 years ago, he probably would have been a top 10 pick. I want to read some more about this. The Indianapolis Colts have selected former blah blah blah, the running back not being valued as high. So they're saying just due to the position of running back not being valued as high nowadays, that's why his stock got pushed down. But I mean, if you're an offensive based if you're any fucking kind of football coach, you know the damage that this guy can do. Look at these stats. What the fuck, bro? Look at these stats. Look at these stats. <laughs> oh, wow. Bro, I would have got this guy with my first pick. I'm not even going to lie. It would have been a crazy move, but in five years' time, we would have all known why. Because this guy... Oh, mate, I cannot wait to see him play. Jonathan Taylor was an impact player for Wisconsin from the moment he stepped onto the field. In 2017, he rushed for 1,977 yards and 13 touchdowns. The next year, 2018, he rushed for 2,194 yards and 16 touchdowns. In 2019, his next year, as a junior, unbelievably, it was his best season yet. He put up... 2,003 yards and 21 touchdowns. The career awards at Wisconsin was long. Jonathan Taylor won the Doak Walker Award twice and was a two-time All-American in 2018 and 19. His freshman year, he set the freshman season rushing record and was named the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Jonathan Taylor looks like the prototypical running back and has impressive power, size and speed. He looks like a big bruising running back, but he also has impressive breakaway speed. He is very patient, which allows him to wait until a hole is open. There aren't many knocks on Taylor's game, but there are a few. Okay, it's the first I'm hearing of it. He had some fumbling concerns with Wisconsin, coughing up the ball 18 times in 41 games. Okay, that is definitely a concern. Jonathan Taylor also wasn't a great threat catching the ball out of the backfield. He's shown some flashes of being able to adapt that into his game, and the hope is that can be something that is improved on in the NFL. And I guarantee... Anything that this guy puts his mind to, he's going to improve at. Jonathan Taylor should be able to contribute right away for the Colts. It wouldn't be that surprising if he was in the top 10 in rushing this season. And I'd have to agree. And that puts a massive smile on my face because I can't wait to see it. Yes! You know what, guys? That's enough for this video. In the next one, we're looking at the biggest winners from night number two of the 2020 draft. The draft only happens once a year. I want as many videos as I can to put on this channel. So you're going to have to bear with me. 
If you have enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, please do. And I'll see you soon. Peace out.